Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Paul Chamberlain, the Air Force guy here this evening. And I'll tell you what, you know, I, I, I did something back a few weeks ago pertaining to solar, and I know it was not um, everything that, that I feel that you really wanted to hear. And so tonight, I have very special guests here this evening that I think are going to be able to answer a lot of your questions. By the way, as you come in, this evening, please do announce yourself. Tell us where you are and um, your names, and we'll announce that as well. But uh, without further ado, let me go ahead and bring up, now this is the dry campers. This is Mike Ready? and Leanna. Did I, did I get your names right, Mike and Leanna? Yes. All righty, how about that? So, well, good evening. So, um, so we have, listen, I, I don't want you to get nervous or anything. We only have like 5,000 people watching. <laughs> Okay, so don't get too nervous here this evening. But uh, you know, so I have uh, I have a buddy of mine, George Danik from down in Florida here this evening. We got Vincent Kennedy, I believe you're from over there in West Virginia, if I'm not mistaken. Chuck Ash down there in Salisbury. DOA, appreciate you guys coming on in here. So that's who, who has announced herself so far. By the way, y'all have, have to have a Google account in order to be able to message or comment in here. But if you have any questions. As you are, as we're going on, please feel free to put them in the comments and we'll try to get those answered as quickly as we can. Northwood's RV life is here. Janice from JLS Love Life there in Texas. And Kent Grant from Ellicott City, Bambi and Kent. Appreciate everybody showing up here this evening. So, without further ado, let's get on, you know, enough about me. Let's talk a little bit about you guys. You guys got a pretty interesting story, don't you? <laughs> I don't know about I mean, that. <laughs> you know. huh? I think I, I think in my small discussion with you, I thought that I thought it was pretty interesting uh, about how you guys get started. You now you all are full time RVers, right? Yes. yes. And how long have you all been full time? On and off for four years. Yeah. And now, but now you're full time, full time. Yes, yes, we've been full time for about a little over a year. A year. Yeah, a little over a year. So now, how did you get started in the solar business? Because you guys actually, and the reason why I brought them on, ladies and gentlemen, is these guys, if, if you have a need for solar now, you better be patient. This is my discussion. I'll, I'll, I'll let them tell you about that in a minute. But if you're in the need for uh, upgrading or adding solar to your camper, these are the people to see. So but let's talk to, to you about how did you guys get involved in adding solar to people's campers? Well, um, oh, yeah, yeah, so, uh, what 17 is kind of when it started, yeah, kind bit. of, yeah. So, uh, Les Chuck Moore Journey are friends of ours, Nathan and Marissa, and Hensley and JJ, and they uh had an airstream at that time and they had already had some solar on it and they wanted to upgrade and go with a little bit bigger and you know, um, be able to make the inverter um run the whole coach so he asked me he knew that i did low voltage electronics he asked me if um i'd be interested in doing it and i was like sure yeah no no worries at all and then um then they had that rig for three years ish almost almost three years of solar i was like two and a half years of solar and then they ended up getting an open op range open range yep and then um, they contacted us again and said, hey, you know, we were families growing. We're going to a fifth wheel. Um, we want to get it outfitted. We've got, um, you know, this is what we we want to have in the system. And so they asked if I would do it. And in, in the installation world of things, airstreams are so tight and so cramped. And, you know, you basically just have to hide everything as much as you can because there's just no space. Um, but in a fifth wheel, I was able to really show off his craftsmanship, Yeah, show, <laughs> show off, you know, um, and then, you know, he was tickled pink with the install. And then, uh, he basically did a video that said, you know, Hey, if you want solar, this is your guy. So, um, I think it's been viewed like 80,000 times or something like that. And, um, you know, from, you know, that's. That's how we got started. That was the catalyst. <laughs> and then from that point, um, 
next we uh let's see what do we do next uh we started a youtube channel immediately and started recording all of the installs and you know just showcasing what what a uh, solar system can be that it's not just you know lose a bunch of space up in your front bay or you know cram some stuff in there i mean it can be pretty and it can be powerful so right well so now let me ask so so what what did by chance if you could explain how much of the um solar and how many batteries did you put on their rig uh their rig uh originally had six batteries a single inverter um started with 12 1200 and uh yeah i was the i want to say he did 310 12, panels at first didn't he yeah so it'd be 1240 <clears throat> watts of solar yeah. um and an mppt and a um uh bmv 712 which is your battery monitor so now that was now you're talking his airstream or on, on his on his fifth wheel oh that was the fifth that was wheel, the fifth wheel. Um, fifth wheel. On the okay. Airstream, it was an expansion of from 200 watts to 700 watts, which is seven panels. And then uh, I think he had a 2,000 watt inverter at that time. And okay. then, no lithium batteries at that time. No lithium though. batteries, all lead acid. So and now, then, go ahead. With, with, with the 1,240 <laughs> watts of solar, and you say he has six batteries? Yes. Six lithium batteries? Yes. Now, with with the li uh, lithium batteries, those there's different amp hour lithium batteries you can get. Is that correct? Yes. So and which amp hour batteries did he go to? The hundreds, the Battleborn uh, hundred amp lithium batteries. Okay. So now, what do you, what can he operate off of those batteries? Um. Well, um, at whenever he first did the install, he did not have easy starts. So basically anything except the AC unit. And I mean anything. Um, okay. uh, when they, they did find that their residential fridge was a, a big power oh, hog. Yes, though. yes. So we, en we ended up um, doubling their solar though. Um, yeah. yeah, we took in, what was it? 315s or 320s that we went to? So, it was 320s, I think. Yeah. He ended up with almost 2,600 watts of solar or real close no to it. Yeah. Now, so now is there a reason why you just want the 100 amp hour uh, lithium instead of like the 200? The, well, for Battleborn, the, the 100 amp hour is um, available to the public. The 200 or two, the 250, 250 yeah. yeah, the 250 is only available to manufacturers. Yeah, and they don't make anything between the two, right? No. It's just lower, it's 50 and 100. Yeah. I got you. Okay. Incredible. Incredible. So, so let me ask you for the, and by the way, if anybody has any questions, by all means, do chime in and we'll, we'll get them to answer your question because I'm sure I'm not going to ask everybody's questions. Um, but in reality, how much solar is enough for your average camper? <laughs> well, that's see, that's a really hard question. Well, it's a trick question. So well, it is. <laughs> so there's two kinds of people: people that don't really care about power until they understand how much power they have available, okay. and then there's the people going in the door and they're just like, "I want to be able to run it all," and the the people who are conservative, um, if they have a residential fridge, I would recommend at least three batteries and a 3000 watt inverter. Um, you're going to lose a large portion. Oh yeah. And the solar would be at least 1200 Watts. Um, you're going to lose a large portion of your battery bank based on the efficiency of your, uh, refrigerator, which is, is going to be a drain 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and then for the people who are coming in the door <clears throat> and they know that, you know, they're power hogs coming in, you know, they start at six batteries, um, and at least 2,600 Watts of solar. And then some of them on have, a large rig on a large rig. Yes. And then, um, they, some of them go with a single inverter. Um, but then some of them go to what we call like a max package where it has uh, two 
3,000 watt inverters. Okay. So the, if you have two 3,000 watt inverters, mm -hmm. I think one's running your refrigerator, microwave, things like that, and the uh, other's running your air conditioner? Well, the, the question that I ask people is if they want to be able to run more than one AC while they're inverting. So if they want to run two ACs at the same time while they're inverting, then you have to have two separate inverters or one that's, you know, relatively, um, you know, 5,000 watt, like a Quattro. Wow. So it gets pretty, pretty entailed, eh? It gets that answering that question for people <laughs> is, is very, it's thousands of dollars. Yes. Yeah. Cause people, I think people have a the majority of the time when people ask me, well, does this thing have solar? And I, and you know, then I asked the question, well, okay, you know, when you ask him if it has solar, what do you plan on using? And so many, so many people have a misconception of solar. Yes. Yes. Because, you know, they, 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 drive, they drive down the road, they see a house that has all these solar panels on the roof, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And they think that those solar panels run the house, which they don't. People don't understand that that power is being sent back to the electric company. The grid, yeah. Yep. It's, you know, so. I think people have misconception. Now you can actually set it up that way, but majority of people don't. But well, most people have a misconception on RVs. Right. Oh, and absolutely. And uh, depending on the state, some states, um, like if if it's like they're putting solar on their home, and mm -hmm. they don't have to pay anything out of pocket, um, and the power is going to be going back to the power company. In in that, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, in that scenario, the um, sorry, back here. Uh -huh. Sorry, grab, grab it water. Sorry, we were actually in the middle of dinner, so oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it's yeah. totally fine. Totally fine. So he just had to wash some stuff down. Yep. There you so, go. um, um, the. The power, uh, the state will not allow you to put batteries on the system to store the energy. <clears throat> it's coming back. It <laughs> but, the, but essentially, yes, everybody, you know, with, with RVs, everybody has this misconception because it's, it's essentially <clears throat> like, okay, well, um, I, and we, we get at this a lot, you know, we, um, we did the R village rally in February and yeah. a lot of people would come up to the booth and say, well, I have a, a hundred watt solar panel. Like, what can I do with it? You know, kind of thing. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's more about, well, what can I, what do you want to do with it? What can you do with it kind of thing? Right. right. That's the first thing I, that's the first thing I ask them is, what are your expectations? Right. Exactly. Yes. So, yep. and, and then, of course, then you ask the other question. So how often do you plan on camping at campgrounds? Oh, that's all I plan on doing. Well, you don't need to worry about solar at that point. The system's not for you. Right. So, yep. but I think, and the, well, the other thing I think people have a misconception on too, you know, when you have a travel trailer, you're so much, and you give this can. This is the same with a fifth wheel or any RV for that matter. You're limited by how much cargo carrying capacity you have, yep, and how much storage area you have. So, I mean, mm -hmm. there's so many limitations that people aren't aware of, and they really don't grasp the concept of panels and weight and things of that nature. So, yes, yep. I we were literally having a conversation with a future customer that, um, he bought a smaller fifth wheel. I think it's 30 feet, but it is, um, um, I asked him how he was doing on weight and he says, well, I don't know. I haven't fully got it loaded yet because they're getting ready to hit the road. I said, well, do you know where the sticker is on the outside and just read me some numbers off of it. And after he read the numbers, I was actually pretty shocked. I'm not going to say what brand it was, but the, cargo carrying capacity which is your weight limit was like a thousand twenty one pounds wow so thus that four battery four panel system with an inverter <laughs> and uh mppt comes in at about 350 pounds yes that limits people and uh, you know that's a, a lot of people need to take that in consideration mm -hmm. and uh th that's the reason why it's important that you deal with somebody that's going to go ahead and go over that with you. As you can see, Mike and Leanna, they actually know what they're talking about here. So what, what type of RV are you guys camping? Right now we're in an Airstream, uh, 2006 Airstream Classic, 34-foot, triple axle with a slide. <laughs> wow. 
guys are you guys are going around in style. Mm. Well, I don't know if I'd say that. So we, <laughs> we bought it used and we bought it like it's it's the, the guy it's that damaged. was the previous owner, <laughs> there's not a panel on that thing on the outside that doesn't have a ding, scratch, dent, rub mark. It's semi stylish. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, 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 what, what is it? It has a it has its own class, right? But I mean that's also awesome. you guys rehabbing the whole thing? Uh, no, no, we're just literally using it to get A, a to B comfortably. Well, yeah. you know, the cool thing with that is you can put those flexible solar panels, you won't see any dings or dents. Just <laughs> <laughs> cover the whole thing. Just <laughs> cover the whole yeah. thing down the sides, the whole nine yards. You guys be good yeah. to go. <laughs> so. so now how much so now how much weight can you carry on that? Of course, three axles really helps. Yes, that one actually, believe it or not, it's almost three thousand pounds. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep. So how much soil do you have on it? Um, <laughs> all the questions. You know how the plumber has leaks in his house? And really? they're never fixed. And they're never fixed. <laughs> no. <laughs> we, we just bought this one in September, though. Yeah. And so we he hasn't had the time, but also we're in the process of switching back to our probably fifth wheel. switching back to a fifth wheel. And so I was, we were like, well, let's don't let's don't do it. And right. we'll up right. at the new one. So, so. I, I literally have 1500 watt um, Renogy Eclipse um, solar panels that were cargoing with us. So, okay. Yep. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, now how long is it, how, how long do you normally spend on a, on a job when you're installing these panels and batteries and everything? Right. How long does a typical job take you? Um, on the short side, one that I've done six or seven of um three or four days maybe five uh with testing yeah. but um seven or eight for the you know the bigger systems with over 2000 watts solar and six batteries and stuff wow that's a so is it is this something that you would suggest to people that they do on their own no not really not um, unless they really know their <clears throat> electricity electricity right in if, general <laughs> if they can grasp dc power and how it operates at high amperage and ac power which uh operates at um 240 volts 50 amps which is you know 50 amp shore power uh if they completely understand how both of those operate then sure but you got to be careful of of you know, other things that are, you know, in a basement for of an RV and, you know, know what's grounded and what's not. Um, like, for example, uh, uh, oh, what's it called? The heating duct, the silver tube that, that blows your furnace. So the furnace box is metal and that metal box is grounded to the frame. So that's essentially the negative terminal on a battery. Well, that that tube has a wire that wraps around in it and if that were to bounce and touch a battery on the positive terminal that's that's a, a really big long fuse or fire <laughs> so gotcha. i mean just you got to know what you're doing in small tight spaces certainly so what uh, what problems do you have because of the heat that these things are generating batteries or even from your uh, panels and, and so forth? Um, the panels, um, I don't do any flat panels uh, that, that glue down. Um, they're just, I don't really recommend them because the warranty is not long enough. The, the best ones on the market have between five and seven year warranty, whereas the glass panel, yes, it's heavier, but it carries a 25 year warranty. So, and the, the glass panels are cheaper. They're, they are more heavy. Don't get me wrong. There, there's definitely some more weight there. Um, and then the, uh, what was the question? Again? The heat. The heat. Okay. So the batteries, uh, Battleborn batteries, I, I'm just a fan. It's an all around, just a <clears throat> battle born. Um, I mean, if they get too hot, they shut themselves off. If they get too cold, they shut themselves off. If they have the wrong voltage, they shut themselves off. If you literally take a, a wire and go from the positive terminal and touch over to the negative terminal 
on a battery bank, not just one, on the whole bank, right. the batteries will shut themselves off. You'll get a big spark, but then they shut themselves off. So and you're not getting you're not getting much heat generated. And you from. don't get much heat generated from them. Now the charging units, they do have to breathe the, the converter, which takes AC power and charges the battery. Um it um that thing does need to breathe. The MPPT, um, it's it has no moving parts. It just has a aluminum uh, uh, fins in the back to, to dissipate heat. Um, but for the most part, as long as you um, allow the the converter slash inverter to breathe, you're good. So now you brought up an interesting point because this is something we go over in a class B pertaining to cold. Mm-hmm. What what do you tell your customers as far as for these lithium batteries? How are they going to make them charge in the event that they're in either too hot of an area or if, if it's too cold out because if it's too cold or if it's too hot? And I, I doubt that most people are going to have the, the heat issue either, but I think it's more um, plausible with um, cold. Yep. And it getting down below 30, 38 degrees or whatever the temperature for the particular battery. Do you yes. recommend heat pads or anything so that they're able to continue to take a charge? So when I install these systems, uh, I normally move the battery bank to a, a living space, which is normally never less than 50 degrees. Okay. So I, I place the batteries in an environment to eliminate the need for the heating pads. I'm not a fan of the heating pads because they're going to use power. So if you're running low on your battery bank, but it's it's uh, the on uh, Battleborn batteries, it's 25 degrees is the kind of that shutoff point okay. where that's your cold cold number. And you know if your batteries are running low and you need to put some charge back in them, then you flip the you know your your, Heat your pad. heating pads back on. And then, you know, you have to have a whole lot of power be, be available to charge them whenever you turn those those heating pads on. But uh, Battleborn did just come out with their heated battery um, mm -hmm. so that it, I don't know exactly it's, how that works. Well, it's built in. <laughs> so it has a, a built in heating element inside the battery that should you be in a cold environment, uh, uh, sub 25 degrees that, you know, you uh, someone would wire it so that you flip a switch and then, you know, it, it heats itself up. Right. Okay. Now let me ask you another question though. Um, I need to get a system installed in my camper. When, when can we uh, get you uh, scheduled to do that? Uh, well, the next, um, <laughs> I don't know, next actually two calendar years from now. <laughs> oh, wow. So <laughs> so currently we're booked up yeah. for 2021, yeah. but, um, right. you know, sometimes we do have cancellations. Um, we mm -hmm. actually had somebody inquire the other day though. She said, um, I'm getting my RV in 2023 and going full time in 24. So I would like my system in 2024. <laughs> she said, I just wanted to get on your radar right now. Yeah. So, I mean, but it's, it's never, you know, we don't want people to be discouraged, you know, about contacting us because, you know, we might have a cancellation. We've yeah. only had one. And that was literally for, um, he's actually upgrading his RV and his truck because we were really concerned about, the you know, the weight, like we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, <laughs> the, the problem oh, this, with, this is a good time for me to bring this one up here. Yeah. Yeah. The problem with that, Fabian, is that, you yeah. know, it, it takes time to actually train. You know, Mike's yeah. been doing what he's been doing for over 25 years. So, and it slows them down, you know, to train people. And yeah. so that's kind of where we are right now. I mean, I help him when I can. But. Yeah. The prerequisites um, on the resume, you know, <laughs> there's, there's at least three or four hats that have to have been worn before I'll even consider it. Yeah. I wear, I wear many hats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's amazing. So, so what do you, are you the, are you kind of like the, uh, the tool person for him, you hand him the tools, like when he's on the roof, you throw them up to him and stuff? Um, I have done that. Yep. She's uh, actually a good, she, she's a good toss. I she, have become a good toss, yes. Yep. Um, I do a little bit of, of 
anything he asks me to do and mm-hmm. that I feel like I'm, I can do. Well, <laughs> let me, let me elaborate on that more. So, um, if I need help installing, then, you know, she, she is very generous and helps out. Um, and I, I definitely give her props for, you know, she conquered her fear of heights to get up on a roof to, to help me out. I was not feeling good in November of last year, 19. And, um, she asked if she could help in any way. And, you know, she got up there with me. Um, and, but, but, that's on the physical side. Now on the back end, she runs the office, the billing, the, you know, the banking, the, uh, she helps me keep track of my inventory and getting stuff ordered. She does all of our traveling logistics, which that by itself is a, is a <laughs> job. <laughs> it, is, it is a job. That's the hardest so, part. Yeah. Especially throw COVID in there and, you know, yeah, she, uh, she, she works magic. Let me tell you. That's awesome. I'm going to be sharing your link out there, too. By the way, their link is down below, and I just put it in the chat also. Be sure to check out their channel there. Um, and then does anybody have any questions for them? What, what, what's been your toughest job that you guys have, have done so far? Uh, toughest install. Um, okay, so toughest job. Oh. So in October, <laughs> I did an install on a – 29 foot 11 inch fifth wheel with 17 solar yeah, panels on the roof i wouldn't say that was the toughest you know what that other than the solar that was the toughest solar yeah yeah um basically a normal solar setup will take me one to two days max um that specific job took me four days on the roof and then the rest of the job <laughs> um the toughest overall is i'd say the serenity yeah class b a leisure travel van serenity uh 600 watts of solar on the roof wired so that he could plug an additional 600 deployable um six batteries and 600 amps of batteries six is not what we recommend no no um and it was all completely hidden he didn't lose any space um let's see yeah that was that was definitely the toughest wow wow so let's see now someone's asking this question if one decided to use agm batteries are there any brand is there any one that you'd recommend over optima. another which one optima blue top uh deep cycle we had those on our fifth wheel yep we use that. Okay. Well, that was before, you know, lithium that base. That was pre-lithium, yeah. <laughs> so now, and let me ask you, so on that on that AGM battery, how many amp hours is it? Well, they have two different models. Um, okay. One of them has, I think it's 63 amps. The other one is almost 90 amps, which because of AGM slash lead acid, they're both like this. If you have a 90 amp battery, 45 amps is usable. You don't want to go below that 50% threshold. Otherwise, now, you let me ahead. ask you this. The ones you're talking about for the AGM, is it a 12 volt or is it a 6 volt? 12. Wow. So I, I know in, in there's a lot of campers out there. I should say a lot. There's campers out there that they put two 6 volt AGMs instead of having the 12 volt. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're talking about having 190 amp hour per mm-hmm. battery. Why would somebody want a six six amp or six volt versus twelve volt? Um, when you do the honestly, when you do the math out, so you have to take the six volt battery and wire two of those together to make the twelve volt to run the right. system. So, um, if each battery is one hundred and ninety amps, then when you wire them together, then the voltage goes up to twelve amps, but the Sorry, yeah, the voltage goes up to 12 amps, but the amps stays at 190. So technically, you you only have um, 95 amps available anyhow, which okay. it's it's almost the same as wiring two 12 volt batteries in parallel. So okay. your voltage would stay the same if you did parallel, and then the amperage would double. So, um. It, it's about power consumption 
and you know how much you're going to want to draw you can get a little bit more out of a six volt battery like a golf cart battery um i mean but it's it's not much it's, it's not i just i don't think that it is um it's not worth the the expense to go down to a six volt battery honestly in my opinion okay all right and then we have another question here they're talking about manufacturers that have already rv plug and play basically solar solar persistence um yep. but though and typically those things are very small like like a 10 amp system aren't they well the the wire gauge that they're pre-wiring with determines what you can do with it so if if like on the roof if they have a, a jaboni yes. which is a, a little gland that you would plug your mc4 connectors into that gets the wiring down to the front basement if it's a fifth wheel or wherever the batteries are at for that matter on okay. any, um if they ran a six gauge wire then you could probably do up to 500 watts or maybe 600 watts if they ran a 10 gauge wire then you can do like 400 watts so um unless you wired things special which would be like in series um and then you could double it and have this the same amount of of um amperage but double the voltage um going through the wiring and not have any wire um oh, what do you call it uh, the loss your percentage and loss in the wire gauge i got you okay that's good yeah because i mean they're not, you went over the pony so the ones they're putting on the roof is obviously going to be a, a much uh, better system than the ones that put them on the side of the camper or by their by the battery box where it's just a little plug and play yes those are yeah. very small very small like 12 or 14 gauge wire maybe 200 watts of panels at the most right so hopefully that helps does, does anybody else have any questions for mike and leanna here i thought you would really do appreciate you coming on here tonight and uh kind of giving us some insight on this thanks for having us yeah yes, thank well, you well like i say i wanted to give people a little bit more information that you know i know enough to be dangerous and uh Same here. Sometimes, <laughs> some, yeah, sometimes you know i don't even know what i know so it's always good to have somebody that's the quote expert on to be able to answer and give straight from the horse's mouth but um uh, but any anyway, uh lee coleman is getting in late uh his excuse is he's living in montana <laughs> it's cold up there i bet it is yeah so but anyway so well, listen, I appreciate you guys uh, taking time out of your evening this evening, and I hope, hope they uh, to be able to catch up to you guys when I'm down in Tampa. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. we'll definitely be there. Well, right. we've been kind of we've been kind of hit or miss as to where whether or not we're actually going to go to the show. It just depends on how how safe what kind of safety measures they put in place. Yes. However, we'll still be in the area, so definitely gotcha. let yep. us know. <laughs> yes, definitely. certainly will. All right. Well, again, thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Appreciate you coming on here this evening. I'll let you guys get back to your uh, your dinner now that it's nice and cold. That's okay. <laughs> That's all good. All righty. Hey, listen, appreciate it. Y'all have a great evening. Thanks take so care. much, Paul. All right, take care. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That was Mike and Leanna. I hope you guys enjoyed all the information they had to offer. By the way, you see the scroll down below. And by the way, if you are on Amazon, please do consider going on there and making – uh, make a wish mid Atlantic, your uh, Amazon Smile account. That way, there, you're not having to pay anything. But every time that you're buying from Amazon, they're going to get a little penny, a little bit something from what you're buying. And that would be very, very helpful. We do appreciate it. And if you haven't, or if you're able to go on and um, donate, I have the link down below. Please do find it in your heart to give a little something to make a wish. And let's make those kids smile. Oh, actually, the whole family. So appreciate everybody coming in here this evening. And uh, we'll see you again next week. So uh, between now and then, I appreciate it. Hope you have a happy, safe, healthy, and prosperous New Year's Eve. And we will see you next year. Take care.